A very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems. So, we have uh, looked at uh, generation of random numbers and how can we generate random numbers in MATLAB. But at the same time, we have also tried to tabulate the outcomes of discrete random experiments such as uh, the roll of a die and the throw of coins etcetera and uh, we have seen some success uh, in plotting them as bar plots or uh, as stem graphs. So, that is there, but the question is that, uh, so the tabulate approach, I should first mention the tabulate approach, the tabulate approach is good for discrete random variables that is if the random variable takes values from discrete set then it tabulates those values well and you can even see percentages that is fine. But case of a continuous random variable, we are in trouble because because a continuous random variable can take an uncountably infinite number of values and because of that every realization of a continuous random variable will have a different value or there will be two repeated values of a continuous random variable with a zero probability that uh, is left to a probability course. We would not go into the detailed discussion of that, but because of that, because of that very fact, we cannot say that uh, a continuous random variable can take a precise value as we have shown. So, this tabulate thing or the tabulate function corresponds to a probability mass function of uh, a discrete random variable, but we know that the probability mass function of a continuous random variable is 0 for all cases. So, in that case the use of a tabulate command for a continuous random variable becomes uh, problematic or a tabulate like command for a continuous random variable becomes problematic. So, then the question becomes how do we quantify the statistics of a continuous random variable. So, to answer that uh, when we talk about a continuous random variable we say that uh, the PDF gives the weighted probability weighted by 1 over delta x t of x taking value between x and x plus delta x weighted by 1 upon delta this is the probability density function. So, we see that uh, it can no longer take values or it, it can no longer take absolute uh, single value, singular values or singleton values rather these histogram or the probability density function is defined in terms of intervals. So, we are now interested in x taking values or the random variable taking values that lie within an interval. So, to quantify this, uh, we say that we plot histograms or we use histograms. A histogram is basically a representation that on the x axis instead of uh, values we will have bins. So, the idea is that or the idea I will use another slide, the idea is that histograms, the idea is into bins and count of x lying within bin. So, how do we do this? So, find the count of x lying within a bin. So, how do we get about doing this? Answer is simple. We will actually 
let us rebuild this from scratch. So, let us say this is program, this is the program to display the histogram of say I say that count or n equals 10,000 x equals random this. So, now I want to generate a histogram for this. So, the first thing I do is I will define a range where this lies. So, this is much like a quantizer you might have done in your communication systems theory course that uh, say we define x min as the minimum value of x define x max as maximum value of x and I divide this into say I use so I have to use L steps. So, so now I get a range that x can take values between x min and x max that I know. So I will now divide this into L bins or L interval. So, delta that I take as the step size is x max minus x min divided by L. This is the step size. So, I have now divided this into intervals or uh, this delta is the gap between two intervals. So, I can say that x lower limits of each interval are x min plus or the lower limits of each interval are 0 l minus 1 times delta bin centers plus this and upper limits of each bin are one to L this. So I'll also do that customary clear screen clear all. Clear all, close all, CLC. I will do that and with that let us run this. So, hist this and I will run this. So, this and lower limits you can see coincide with minus 3.87 which is the minimum value and the upper limit is 3.5636 which is the actual upper limit. Now what we will do is we will test that uh, we will take a x. So, for c1 in we create an iterator 1 to n for we take each x and we test it against each interval for c2 if x c 1 is less than upper limits c 2 and also I will define counts then counts 
C2 equals count C2 plus this. This I'll run and run. So this gets updated dynamically. Actually, I should stop this here and semicolon run. This has run. So this you can see results in counts that uh, increase to a limit and then go on decreasing and we can plot this as plot bin centers on the x axis and counts on the y axis and copy I'll use bar here. So, since we got a graphics error earlier, I will use the PowerPoint presentation where I have a similar code and show that the histogram looks like this. This you could uh, inspect from our code. This is a similar code with slightly altered variable names. So, bin cent, bin min and bin max. We had used lower limbs, upper limbs and bin centers. So, bin centers remain the same and uh, bin min and bin max are changed. So, instead of samples, I had used n. Otherwise, this is the same code and uh, this gives a similar return. The only difference being that uh, this is for a different set of uh, inputs or but this is an in inefficient uh, implementation of the histogram. We will look at an efficient implementation of the histogram along with how to compare these two implementations in the next lecture. So, that is all for now. Thank you. Mm -hmm.